wonderful people all through this municipal airport. I know that you didn't come here today to listen to a speech by me, Wiley Maine, as your congressman. You came here to see and hear your president. The moments are ticking away. Uh, to that time when Air Force One will be on the ground and the president will be with us and we have literally hundreds, perhaps thousands more people to make room for here. Yeah. Uh, Welcome to Sioux City and our greater Siouxland area. Excited to see the president? Thrilled, thrilled beyond all recall. Why is that? For, first time we've had a president uh, to see here in our Siouxland area for us and for these children anyway. Excuse me, why did you come see the president today? I just wanted my children to have the opportunity to come see the president. I think it's just an opportunity of a lifetime that we get to see. And they, they, they include the president in their prayers every evening, and we wanted to know who they're praying for. We hope that as his hand goes by, we might shake it. I think he's a good head, and I think he's a very good man. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> I do, too. I think he is wonderful. I think, I think they're all something special, don't you? We need someone to lead us and to make decisions, we need somebody up there at the top. We can't just do it by ourselves, so. Do you think of him as your leader? <laughs> yes, I do, right. Well, when he follows his religious convictions and he's the leader, we, t we chose him as our leader. We accept him. I think he's a great leader. Yeah, I sure do. He's your personal leader, does he? He certainly is. He's the leader of our country, and we support him 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. that's got the guts to represent the whole nation, they got to be pretty good. Are there qualities that you admire in him? I do because I think he was an athlete and I, I think he's a great man also because of that, because he's athletic. Another people should be because they're like fat people sit around on their butts. Right. What other qualities do you see in him? Oh, he's a sharp dresser. He seems to be not uh, too much one way or not too much the other. He seems to be pulling for both sides. Do you look on him as your personal leader? I do in the kind of sense of the country, yes. Personally, no. Why not? My because dad my dad, <laughs> my father, Daddy. I would say my father would be my personal leader. Does he remind you of your father? He's sort of, of yeah. He's, like our kid. He's, a, <laughs> He's just a strong man. They're both, They're both strong men. He is an institution. He is the most powerful man in the world. You say, well, what about the Russians? They have, uh, they have the uh, same uh, power that we have. But there it takes more than one man to pull the trigger. Here, we've set it up so one man can do the job. He would never dream of doing it, of course, but it's within his power. Good morning. <laughs> they have. They got the signs up. How are you doing today? Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi there. How are you, young lady? Hi. How are you? Nice to see you all this morning. Hi, boys. 
Well, um, last time I was here, the Boy Scouts. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. I'm a minister. You're much in our prayers. Thank you. I appreciate it, sir. Hi. Did you shake his hand? What? Did you get to shake his hand? I didn't, but all, the, all my kids did, all my buddies here. I think they'll remember. Oh, man. Are you kidding? It's great. It's a great update. These kids have been working for, uh, we're now going for three weeks now, passing brochures out in high rise apartments all over this, the valley. And now they get a chance to take, uh, shake hands with the president. That's a marvelous opportunity. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States of America. TV White House correspondent on his way to the White House press room. There's the White House, there's the press room, there's the correspondent. He wouldn't be mayor anymore if he wasn't tough. Okay. Press photo, press photo, assemble quickly, bipartisan congressional leadership, carry the word down. Let me get the lights. From the point of view of the average citizen, I think that uh, it's, it's kind of refreshing that he's open and he's accessible, uh, that he moves around the country. But quite frankly, the program, the policies uh, haven't changed. Uh, the economic policies are pretty much the same, only with a little more forthrightness. What you sense is that somebody's at least in, uh, around the White House now. During the last months of the Nixon administration, there were no, it was almost impossible to get a decision. They were so wrapped up with uh, Mr. Nixon's personal problems that governmental matters went, uh, were, were just left alone or went baby. Hello, Mr. Ehrlichman. How was it today? Just fine. public television. Oh, that's one of my favorite stations. Do that. Do you get bored up there? How do I? St my goodness, couldn't you get closer? No. Huh? No. Come on, get a little closer. <laughs> John Ehrlichman. John Ehrlichman. Who? Who? John Ehrlichman. Oh. He's part of the Watergate trial. Yeah. What did he do? Did he take some money too? No, he was an advisor to the president. As a presidential advisor, what do you do? Well, uh, that's a big question. I guess I do what the president tells me to. Uh, I think the structure of the office of the presidency has to fit the incumbent president like a suit of clothes. So um, I think it will depend in large measure how uh, President Ford, for instance, evolves his style, what his, what his philosophy of the role of the presidency is, as to how that office ought to be structured for the next couple of years.
Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. The President will actually be introduced tonight by the National President of the Future Farmers of America, 20-year-old G. Mark Mayfield of Caney, Kansas. People are looking for a President in whose uh, honesty and uh, candor they have confidence. I think they, I think he has already met that requirement of leadership. Now they're also looking for a Moses to lead them out of the wilderness of uh, economic uncertainty. He does have some real assets, namely he's folksy. Uh, he, uh, he's big physically, he seems open, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't appear to be conniving or uh, hiding uh, or, uh, or pushy. Uh, he's got some, he has some natural assets, but uh, all of those assets will not pull him through unless he has a, a, unless it has a program and policy that makes some sense. Now some have said that instead of asking Congress and the nation to bite the bullet, I offered only a marshmallow. Well, I had already asked the Congress to postpone for three months a 5.5% pay increase for federal government employees, which would have saved $700 million. Congress wouldn't even chew that marshmallow. They haven't as yet shown much appetite for some of the other marshmallows in my latest message. But if they don't like the menu, I may be back with some tough turkey. If he was going to have a nationwide television address out at Kansas City or wherever he's going to have it, that instead of giving us, uh, you know, the, the, some readings out of the world, out of the uh, Farmer's Almanac, uh, <laughs> that I would have expected that we would get a, a, a a policy statement. In the letters that I've received at the White House are thousands of good suggestions. For instance, take all you want, but eat all you take. The first words I can remember in my dad's house were very simple, but very direct. Clean up your plate before you get up from the table. And that's still pretty good advice. When you aren't using them, turn off the lights, turn off the television, turn off the radio, turn off the water, use less hot water. Insulate attics and windows, shut doors, keep rooms at 68 degrees in wintertime when you're awake and at lower temperatures when you sleep. He said, uh, clean your plate, uh, don't eat, uh, don't waste. Uh, he, he read some letters that had come from uh, people in other parts of the world or other parts of America. Uh, very good letters, people that were uh, volunteering, as he said, and uh, in this uh, fight on inflation. What first got you to write a letter to the president in the first place? What was the event that made you write the letter? The timing of it was uh, right at the minute that we were watching his speech, where he asked us to uh, make lists of ways that you can conserve and uh, share it with your neighbors. And um, I think it sounded like, uh, just sounded like a good idea. I was sitting there watching it when it happened, and I, I, it floored me. But it kind of went through my mind, well, what if, what if he did read my letter, and all of a sudden I'd sit there and I'd... And I was, I was driving in the driveway at the time. I was just coming home from work, and he's standing at the door, waving his arms madly and saying, the president's talking about us. <laughs> he'd lost his mind. From Hillsboro, Oregon, the Stevens family writes, they are fixing up their bikes to do the family errands. They are also using fewer electrical appliances, turning the thermostat down and the lights off. But uh, I, I haven't felt any upsurge. Uh, in other words, our mail doesn't indicate yeah, anything like this. It doesn't indicate that there's, that the country has been all at once uh, galvanized. Uh, galvanized into a position. The American people, I can report tonight, 
have responded magnificently. A great citizens' mobilization has begun and is beginning to roll. I think the greatest thing that, um, that uh, a leader can do, and I think that this man is trying to do, is um, try to remind us who we are as a people, because there's no end to what we can do if we remember who we are and, what, and what's possible for us uh, working together. And uh, um, those of us that uh, lived through World War II know that, uh, uh, that that's possible. You can mobilize yourselves to do almost anything, uh, some really grim tasks or some very hopeful ones. And, and uh, when the people have some hopes and some dreams and some possibilities, there's no end to what you can do. You can survive anything, I believe. And, uh, and I think he knows that's true. That, and that's what he's trying to tap in on. America is arousing itself as it always does in time of great challenge to prove that we are people who can do anything we want to do when we really want to do it. We are going to win in America. Nothing has disappointed me worse in my life or more in my life than to have not succeeded in this presidential business. Uh, I felt I would have been, could have done a good job but uh, there comes a time when you just have to recognize that uh, that, that maybe uh, isn't for you. Even though I can still arouse these audiences better than any of these other candidates can that are out here on the road. I think you ought to know how I feel about that. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, I... Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Senator Bob Packwood. I love this. Even the Democrats are clapping. He looks just like he does on TV. He's a great guy. Great guy. Real regular guy. The first time you've seen him in person? No, I've seen him before as senator, but I've never seen him as president. You kind of get a glow when the president comes around. Well, I sure do. Yes, I do. After uh, this talk for the men, we're going to auction off a uh, special set of pres presidential cufflinks. Uh, for the kids, we're going to auction off two autographed footballs. After you're used to living a certain way, it's hard for you to really say, all right, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Unless you've got that letter sitting around in front of you and every step of the day, you, you check out a list and say, oh, I'm supposed to do this. Well, you do really, you really don't go by a lot of things. You try to, you know, keep them in your mind. The reason you keep them in your mind is because you see your bill at the end of the month. I'll even toss it to you if you win. Okay, and how much am I bid for this football? $100 starts it off, bid two, $200 bid three, $300 over there, bid four, and $400, who's in? $300 is bid, $400, thank you, now five. And $500 is bid, thank you, bid, how about 750? And seven hundred and fifty dollars you win. I'm offered five hundred dollars over here. And how about six? Five hundred dollars bid six. And six hundred? You can't buy huh? footballs like this. <laughs> and seven hundred dollars is bid, thank you. If they double it, I'll center it to him. <laughs> For fifteen hundred dollars, he'll center it to you. Oh no. Well, if things get really tough, you could hang your clothes out all year round and, and be happy with it. And I, and I was just thinking I'd really like to do that in the summertime. But uh, now this is where I think I am now. It's depressing to me to hang clothes up in the wintertime when it's clammy, you know. That doesn't feel good. So I'm not ready to do that yet. But if I had to, I could. $800 is bid. How about $1,000 something? $1,000 is bid. Bid 1100 It's more than I could ever pay for a football. $1,000 down here. <laughs> $1,000 what? $1,400. $1,400. And $1,400. Tightening down isn't really depressing. Now that's what, you know, that's what we're, uh, that's why we like what the president said. Because you know you can do it and the quality of your life doesn't have to suffer. $1,600 is bid. And I'll John 17. $1,700 is bid. $1,800 is bid. And $1,800, who'll say $2,000? $2,000 is bid. And I'm offered $2,000. $2,000 bid 21. I'm not through. Bid 21 over there, Irv. 
Had two thousand dollars as bid once, twice, twenty two hundred over here. Twenty two hundred. Twenty two hundred as bid. And how about twenty five? Twenty two hundred dollars. Twenty five hundred dollars as bid. Things are bad. How are we going to get the bills paid? And my God, it's all closing in on us, you know. And then you end up saying, well, what's important in life? We want the children to, uh, uh, to know that they, uh, that they can have joy in living without money and uh, that uh, so long as uh, they have enough to sustain themselves, that, uh, that they can be strong and, and independent and, and resourceful. And so we start talking about these things. What really matters? But you know, it takes a crisis. You don't worry about that uh, daily. It is important. It's basic to your life, but uh, but you don't say it aloud until uh, things get difficult. And I I like the idea that there's that there's hope. You know, life isn't dismal because uh, times are tight. And I want the children to know that because they may have tighter times than we do, and uh, they need to know that they can survive well and beautifully uh, without lots. Can you handle that football? You want one too? You would you go twenty twenty seven hundred? Twenty-seven? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven hundred. Now, here, what let's do. We've got two guys in here that both want. And would you go twenty-seven hundred if I got you one, too? Let's give them each one for twenty-seven hundred dollars. You want to come around here and he'll throw them to you? Buddy, come on up here. Driver, come on up here. Twenty-seven hundred apiece. Hey! Hey! Mr. Weinberg. Woo! And that terrific, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute, you're not through. You're not through. Let's sell Mr. President's cufflinks. What are you going to do with a football? Keep it for a souvenir. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do with it? Well, I'd like to be able to hit it. <laughs> You'd like to be able to what? Kick it. Kick it. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? All right. Well, Jerry Ford, we'll have fun with it. Right there, Jerry Ford. <laughs> Hold, hold it still, hold it still. <laughs> still. Thank you. <laughs> we have President Ford's chair to sell. Go ahead. Bid three, $500 in bid. Bid six. And $500 bid six. And 600 Ladies and gentlemen, I'm offered $500 down here for the chair. $600 is bid. $600 bid seven. Seven, six fifty, he says. Six fifty is bid. Bid seven hundred. Seven hundred dollars is bid. Bid fifty. Seven think he was a good football player? <laughs> oh, I don't think he was. But I don't know. But the point of it is that he has charisma, and I think he's honest with the people. Hi, how are you? Nice Hi. to see you. Um, well, it's good to see you. Okay. All right. Hi, how are you? Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Wiley, good luck. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Okay, give Betty my back. Thanks. Thanks for everything. Good luck. It's going real well. It's All right. Up. Good. Be sure to see part two of Gerald Ford's America. Chic to chic, a look at Washington society. How, how do people get invited to a party like this? What do you have to? Well, you know the ambassador. He invites. These are every. He knows everybody here. Did Personally, you get, did you get to see Mr. and Ms. Hartman over there, Bob Hartman, the president's counsel? Oh, 
Which one is he? Well, he has to be a I see his wife. Bob, this is um, Megan Williams of Public Broadcasting System. And she naturally wanted to get your picture. And Paul Goldsmith, Jord Jordanian ambassador. You think the wind campaign is really going to get off the ground? I've been wearing a big button. I had a great big wind button. And it just didn't go with my costume tonight is the only reason I don't have it on. <laughs> doesn't go with the party, does it? For the party? Yeah. When? Yeah. Oh, you mean it's a rather lavish? But so it's a somewhat oh, no. lavish party. Oh, yes, it goes with this party because if all Americans can eat at the Iranian embassy, they don't have to spend anything on food. Right? Sort of a rebate here. Then they come back right. and play, uh, this is Mrs. Hartman. Megan oh. Williams is doing a public you? broadcasting system oh. uh, oh, a story on Washington. I speak very little English. <laughs>
How was it speaking oh, with Mrs. Ford? Lovely. She's Exciting. She's so you know, I knew she had been a farmer model, and so, of course, we're always interested in seeing how she's uh, keeping herself, <laughs> so to speak. What did you talk about? Clothes, would you believe? <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> she comment on your hat? Yes. And uh, she oh, yeah. said she liked it, which, you know, always makes you feel good. I'm a real stomp down Republican, love the Republicans, don't see anything else but Republicanism. I like Nixon and I like Ford. the bus and the woman sitting next to me saw my elephant. She said, oh, I'm so glad to see a Republican. If you're a real loyal American, you believe that uh, the men who and, and the women who is in the White House, she represents us. She represents us. And she's a part of us. And this is our house. This is our house. And whoever's in our house, uh, they represent us. That is if you're a real American. Of course, if you're something else, one of these schmoes, you don't pay any attention to that. a lot like Pat Nixon, too. They're alike? You think she's alike? Yes. I think she's, down, she's a down-to-earth person, like the Nixon family, where I was very fond of them. Are you still fond of the Nixon family? Yes, I still am. I think he, I think it was their press and the communistic elements that were in back of this that we don't know anything about. And it was the young people that were working for him. He, that um, I think he trusted. He trusted them. He was too busy trying to end the war and everything. I met her a year ago last August at the swimming pool in Vail, Colorado. What do you think about her? Wonderful. Great. Why is the uh, First Lady important to you, and what does she represent? Well, I have uh, a husband who is serving his 15th term in Springfield, Paul J. Randolph. So you're familiar with the role of a politician's wife? 36 years. Do you like it? Very much. Because it's been said that Mrs. Ford has said that she really doesn't like being a politician's wife, you know? She'd like a private life. And I wondered how you felt about that. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful for America. Comes first. If the first lady isn't important, who cares about the second lady? You know what I mean? What do you think is special about her? Special? I think she's a, a very down-to-earth person. Like all the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Now this one was much blacker than it actually looked. Hmm? I'm trying to remember what the, what the degree of. Uh -huh. oh, maybe she should have brought an RF. We could have played somebody. Hi. Come Hi. in. Hello. Hi. Come in. Oh, I never, I, I, I never see Onda anyway except through a lens. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I thought we should have a... The people who are sought after in, in Washington are the people with power. And uh, you have uh, anyone near the center of power, which means anyone near the president, is high on the list. I think a lawyer that can get the uh, president to his house, uh, uh, who's probably in this city it's probably worth I, I would just just hazard a guess about a half million dollars to him in income 
uh, when you're in the news business, you want to be with the policymakers. And the policymakers are the tops. And uh, uh, there are a lot of people making uh, policy on a lower scale, I guess, for their particular little areas, for their areas. But um, if you can go with the top, that's what you do. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. We've got them. Well, I was like, can I come help I'm yeah. you? can wear what I brought. So. Oh, good. Miss Gray, what would you like to drink? Uh, I really don't want to think, honey, unless it's just plain water. water. I'll tell you what I need. I'll tell you what I'll take. Soda, soda water. Just plain soda. Did you tell you that? I've eaten too much today. Listen, um... I'll have vodka. How's yeah. Betty Ford today? Great. She is. We've had more fun. What'd you do today? Well, they leaned out the window. And <laughs> <laughs> you leaned out the window and waved to whom? All big, the tourists. Big well, deal. We on the balcony and dropped flowers down to the, uh... Air Force Band leader to get his attention. Oh, darling. Hi. Um, I think everybody except Becky knows Dave Chenerly. How are you? Happy birthday. Oh. I think it's very it's seasonal. Ah. <laughs> Charlie Bott is that he thought that that uh, Gerald Ford's uh, this man, this decency of this man, and the honesty of this man is coming, coming across, and going, uh, and, the, and the people are going to understand it. I think, I think they'll be, like, I think they'll. He's very much like Truman, except Truman wasn't appreciated at the time he was president. And I think yeah. that Jerry Ford might be. Betty, this is Bill Jones and his wife Betty. Hello, I'm very glad to know you. Hey, uh, he's our favorite CBS. Man. Well, one CBS man if they like. You mean <laughs> Phil flew the hundred thousand miles yeah. with him yeah. as did vice you? president? Have you been with? Did you go a hundred thousand miles oh, with Jerry Ford? <laughs> Hello. How are you? In the Bukins. Good. Nancy. Hi, Phil. How are you? Nancy, look who's just came in. Hi. Happy birthday. Thank you. Oh. Hi, Dad. Glad to see you, Nancy. Oh, so nice to see you. How are you, Jerry? Is that presidential assistant, presidential counselor, Bill Buchan? When things are churning up top, yeah, <laughs> what you find down here, yeah. which is what was happening there. What 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 did you find down here when things were churning on top? Uh, your wife is telling us what, that when Jerry Ford first made his mind up to be president, and I didn't know he'd made his mind up to be president. I thought it was... Oh, oh, no, don't misunderstand. You mean to go, to go places? And, and but to, go, to, to go into politics. Go into a political no, I think I, all he ever wanted to be was Speaker of the House. Right? Well, you, you had a baby since then. I've been on a diet. <laughs> Couldn't be a diet. Hello, how are you? Senior, how are you doing? You had a baby. Your baby was born the day Betty Ford went to the hospital. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. She sat at the same table that I sat at at a white at the White House dinner for President Leone. And then and and you know the baby was born two days later. Or was it three days later? George, here, put this on. I look for a gold one for your birthday present. Real gold. Or rhinestone one or something like that. Would win. I thought it'd be amusing, but they don't have anything in the stores. Yeah. Should I give any away here? Or you all, you're going to get them at the White House, aren't you? Oh, sure, no, don't. Go. Yeah. What did I give up in order to merit this? And I said, well, we've lowered the heat in the house. <laughs> and also said, I've well, given up buying food because, you know, we've been eating out. <laughs> Real conservation measure. I'm doing that, chasing Kissinger around, trying to get these pictures of him. And, uh, so, but I thought it was... It was too commercial, and I didn't like it at all. I understand the beaches have been destroyed. Have they? I wish we didn't have to go. <laughs> Stepped right on you. And congratulations on your new baby girl. Baby girl. Great. Three weeks congratulations. old. You, ought to na you named her Elizabeth, didn't you? One name. Kath. Is Elizabeth off to Betty Ford? Because she... Oh, yeah. We planned that for some time. You did? I think it's, it really is something that was the very day, the very minute Betty entered the hospital. You had to name her Elizabeth. Right. Betty, nice to have met you. We'll see you again. I hope so.
You might want to wipe on the way in. Yes, I'm glad to keep, see you. Keep wearing your wind button. <laughs> you can't miss it, can you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a stronger statement than right on. I mean, you know, it's so big. So long, Jim. It's so nice to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, nice time tonight. Thank you. I wish we, I wish we didn't have to go. Good night, David. Come on! Hold him in there! Hold him in there! Yeah! Come on! Come on! You're going to have to go find some men if you're going to expect to win. Come on! Come on! Come on! Yee! Yee! Nobody gets any cheers, you know. That's, this is this is a horse show, everybody. great thrill to see the President of the United States and his lady. Yeah. And I also love the horses because my father was a polo player. Well, I wrote in my column yesterday that she wasn't coming, they weren't coming, and so Mrs. Ford called me this morning and told me she was coming. So that's, I knew, I knew at 8.30 this morning. One bourbon and water, and yeah. the bourbon. There you go. Scotch and soda. Yeah. And scotch and what? I think it's an important event, and I think it's socially it's fun. Really. Why do you think it's so important? I just think it's, well, I'm the old school, and I think socially it's fun. The one wonderful thing about uh, all the ambassadors that are here from all over the country, I think, makes it extremely interesting to socially to see all these lovely people. How do you get involved in the old school social circuit? Well, you just sort of you're. <laughs> well, you just sort of never get you never get away from it. Is that from the old school? <laughs> so, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Turner is an old old friend of mine. We've known each other for a thousand years, and this is old school too. We're at the country club all the time. But I think if you're involved in Washington in activities as we are, I'm on the National Symphony and uh, um, on the Board of Trustees at Trinity and, and you see all these people at these uh, different functions and it's nice to be seen with your friends. I can't say I got any news, no. Uh, no, no, no uh, secrets of government were divulged, if that's what you mean. Walter Heitman and Mrs. Heitman, and then the Honorable Sol Linowitz and Mrs. Linowitz, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mandela Orisma, um, Mr. Huntington Block and Mrs. Block. And I saw a White House aide here tonight at this party, who's a friend of mine, and he said, well, what are you going to do to us tomorrow? And I said, I think we're going to beat you. And he said, I think you're right. <laughs> so uh, then we'll fight. A but at noon, so at 10.30, the Rules Committee meets. That's very important on the Turkish cutoff. Then at noon, we have the campaign reform bill that you know about. 
So anyway, it's going to be a busy day. How many hours do you think you put in a day? About eight to midnight, right. eight to one, something like Hello. that. Hello. Quite right, something. Supports the arts very, very much. She is a supporter of the arts. <laughs> You know, this is when I, I, I really think that there is no film in the camera, don't you? You think she's taking our picture? I hope not. Well, what do you think, it's supposed to network or something? Yeah, but I wouldn't want to be seen together, you yeah, know. Yeah, I know. This is my frustration, you know, this is what I would have adored to have done if I had Well, you should take us around, introduce us to people. All right, come on, as let's As if the let's, camera let's was a go. person. All right, Just talk to the on. camera as if it was a person. Good. You see, my, my, my tragedy is that I'm nearsighted and I can't see. Let's just walk right, through and have fun, you know. Oh, dear. And he's someone this friendly. Is, this is my neighbor, Kay Lewis. Hi, this is hello. Lydia Preston. Nice to see you. And this is the gal that does an awful lot of work to make this thing go. And she does, she really deserves an awful lot of credit. How are you doing? A lot of thought. And time. And time. And hours. And this is Charlie Golden. Hello, Charlie. Hey, Louis. Hey, Louis. Liz Golden, and you're... Hi, I'm John Bradamus. I work for TV TV. It's the main thing that that's happens right. in television now. It's an unsolicited endorsement. I, mean, I think that's very impressive. Well, no, <laughs> you don't have to solicit no, for your true. endorsement. No, it's true. It's true. You know, even, even all of the people who can't pay for it watch it. <laughs> invited to a party here? They are the friends of the country. The people who have been associated with Iran, they are members of the diplomatic corps, they are professors, members of universities, they are uh, people who do business with Iran, they are members of Congress, they are ambassadors, and they are friends of us, so they are invited. And what's the occasion tonight? Tonight is the, is the birthday of the Shah of Iran. I think it is fantastic. I, every time I come into this embassy, I think how unimaginative and stupid we Westerners are. Do you come here often? He's highly intelligent. The fact that he loves parties and loves to entertain people in, in no way reflects uh, a playboy attitude or playboy mentality. He is extremely smart. Without the beauty, the life is nothing. Do I get a kiss too? Oh, so Listen, Roger, uh, the, I, I, 
personally were making their pictures, find out what has happened. As heads of state fall, then there are fewer and fewer heads of state who, who celebrate their birthday year after year after year. Maureen, Mrs. Dean, would it be possible to talk to you for a minute? We're doing a documentary for PBS Educational Television. Not very nice, but I really don't feel I should say anything at this time. I didn't want to talk about your husband. I just want to talk about how you liked being back in Washington, whether you're enjoying it or not. It's a lovely city, and I have many friends here, which I'm very grateful for, especially during this time. I'm the Western Hemisphere representative of Eurobank, which is a consortium of many banks in Europe. And we're loaning money actively in the United States right now because we believe that this is a good time to make short-term profits on, on American companies who are still healthy. We don't think this is going to go on very long. How were you able to maintain your poise the way you did? Do you take anything uh, to, uh, for your radiant beauty? No. How were you able to sit there the way you did all during the trial and all during your court days without a move, without stirring from the right to the left? What is it that you had? Very fascinated. Very interested. Fascinated with the yes. entire procedure? Yes. And I didn't want to miss a minute of it. I think it's tremendous. Do you take vitamins? I think that most Americans have the feeling that we're in, headed for a depression. I think most Americans really believe that, even if they're afraid to say it or if they think it's unpatriotic to say. I think most Americans believe we're headed for a depression. Do you? Did you get to see Mr. and Ms. Hartman over there, Bob Hartman, the President's Counsel? Which one is he? Well, he has to be here. I see his wife. Do you think the wind campaign is really going to get off the ground? I've been wearing a big button. I had a great big wind button. And it just didn't go with my costume tonight is the only reason I don't have it on. <laughs> doesn't go with the party, does it? With the party? Yeah. When? Yeah. Oh, you mean it's a rather lavish. But so it's a somewhat oh, no. lavish party. Oh, yes, it goes with this party because if all Americans can eat at the Iranian embassy, they don't have to spend anything on food. Right? Sort of a rebate. I think we'll see the next flare-up in the Middle East as something that's of proportions not like we've seen before and I think this will happen within the next couple of years. No, I just wonder what because my friends here ask me what it's that young girl is walking around and have that Sony and what's the bottom? Well, the Shah heard that there was going to be a party and yes. he said, hey, listen, uh, they're spending my money over there and I want to see what sort of dig they're going to put on. So uh, uh, you guys come and take television and that will show me. Is that I don't so like, uh, that, you know. that is what my so if you have anything you'd like to say to the Shah, if you'd right like to wish him a happy birthday or something. I'd like you to say something to the Shah, because we are the obedient servant of the, His Majesty the King. Mm -hmm. But what you, whatever you have to say, please say. Well, what's appropriate? Happy birthday? Is that what you're Happy birthday, yes. Happy really? birthday. Sure. Here's to the Shah. Too bad he can't be here. Here's well, if I had a drink, I would drink too. Here's well, to, to the Shah. Here's to the show. Here's to the show. Be sure to see part three of Gerald Ford's America. Secondhand news. Inside the White House press corps. At the White House, President Gerald Ford, who last October became the first man to be nominated for vice president under provisions of the 25th Amendment, is about to name uh, his choice to succeed him in that post. It will take place in the Oval Room of the White House, unlike the ceremony for Mr. Ford's announcement. Uh, that was in the East Room, a much roomier uh, setting for the ceremony. I want your driver's license agency card. Okay. Do you want the uh, full report from inside the Oval Office now or yeah. later? Yeah. Uh, you saw the, uh, the remark, you saw and heard the remarks on television, so we need to go over them. Uh, it's my judgment that as the president talked, uh, Rockefeller was shaking. Uh, he seemed to be slightly rock, uh, moving back and forth, and I thought his knees were a little bit weak. Uh, you know, by, by and large, he, he only smiled, very small smiles twice. He seemed, uh, his head was stationary, and he was looking right at the president's uh, left chin. <laughs>
before we say good night k c e t would like to thank you for joining us for another day of programming without commercials k c e t is operated by community television of southern california our studios are located in los angeles at forty four hundred sunset drive your comments regarding our programs are invited and now good night and good morning from k c e t los angeles